Hey everyone, this lesson is on zinc efficiency. So we're gonna first talk about what zinc is. Zinc is an essential trace element for human health. So why do we actually need zinc? It's actually required for many processes. Some of these include nutrient metabolism and DNA synthesis, immune system functioning, reproduction and fetal development, and wound healing. We're gonna talk more about these processes when we talk about some of the signs and symptoms of zinc deficiency, but just note that there are many, many enzymes that require zinc to function. So zinc has many different roles to play in the body, and these are just some of those. So we actually have to get zinc from our diet. So what are some of the dietary sources of zinc? Some of these include meat and fish, and we can also get zinc from legumes as well. And the recommended daily allowance is 8 to 11 milligrams per day for adults. So 8 for females, 11 for males. So that is the recommended daily allowance. Now, how does someone actually get zinc deficiency? So zinc deficiency is actually more common in developing nations. And I'll briefly talk about the absorption and excretion of zinc here as well. So zinc is actually absorbed in the small intestine, in the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum, and then also in the second part, the jejunum. So distal duodenum, proximal jejunum is where zinc is absorbed. And then zinc is excreted from the gastrointestinal tract itself and also in urine and sweat. So what are some of the reasons for why someone might be deficient in zinc? One of them is low intake. So this can be from a variety of different causes. Vegetarian diets, so as we mentioned before, meat and fish contain zinc. So if there's very strict vegetarian diets that don't have proper supplementation, this can lead to a zinc deficiency. Total parenteral nutrition, so getting nutrition through intravenous lines can lead to a zinc deficiency. Chronic alcoholism, so individuals who have chronic alcoholism issues are less likely to eat, so they're gonna be malnourished, they'll have less zinc intake, and then anorexia nervosa as well. Reduced absorption is also another category of causes of zinc deficiency. So one of the reasons for why someone might have reduced absorption of zinc includes actually eating other types of foods that have phytates. So phytates that are present in seeds and nuts can actually inhibit or reduce the absorption of zinc. We can also see it from having calcium and phosphate as well. So calcium and phosphate along with phytates can reduce the absorption of zinc. Inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease can reduce the absorption of many different elements and vitamins and zinc is one of them. Gastrointestinal surgeries or GI surgeries. So if portions of the gastrointestinal tract are removed, that can reduce the surface area for absorption of zinc. And then there's also this condition known as acrodermatitis enteropathica. So this is actually a rare inherited condition of reduced absorption of zinc. We're not going to talk about this too much, but I just wanted to mention that here. Increased utilization is also another category of causes of zinc deficiency. So an individual might be eating enough, they might be absorbing it fine, but they're utilizing more than they're actually taking in. And these cases often involve pregnancy, breastfeeding, and then even postpartum. So after childbirth, up to two months, there's increased utilization of zinc in the body. And then the fourth category of causes is increased losses. So losing too much zinc. This can be due to diarrhea, urine losses, hemodialysis, and skin losses through burns. So again, these are the categories of causes of zinc deficiency. Low intake, so certain diets, certain other conditions, reduced absorption, especially with phytates, calcium and phosphate that can reduce absorption of zinc. And then there's other gastrointestinal issues that can lead to reduction of zinc absorption. We can also see increased utilization causing zinc deficiency, especially in pregnancy, breastfeeding, and even in the postpartum period. And the last category is increased losses of zinc through diarrhea, urine losses, hemodialysis, and skin losses. So what are some of the clinical features of zinc deficiency? So we're first going to talk about developmental issues. So early on in development, if there's not enough zinc, there can be developmental issues. These include short stature due to reduced growth. Gastrointestinal symptoms can also be involved with zinc deficiency. This in can include diarrhea and loss of appetite. And we can also see immune dysfunction in zinc deficiency. So we talked about requiring zinc for immune system functioning. So if we don't have enough zinc, we're going to have issues with our immune system. And this leads to increased risk of infection in general. Some other 
clinical features or issues that occur when zinc is deficient include reproductive issues. So zinc is required for spermatogenesis, the production of sperm. So if there's not enough zinc, we can see issues with hypogonadism and impotence as well. And there's also psychiatric issues that can occur with zinc deficiency. These include emotional changes like anxiety and depression, and even photophobia as well, so a sensitivity to light. And then there's also integumentary findings as well. These often occur with more severe zinc deficiencies. So hair loss is one of them, usually a diffuse hair loss or diffuse alopecia. We can also see skin lesions. These can look like acne or eczema or xerosis, so dry looking skin. And I also add this here, there can be issues with vision with a zinc deficiency. So eye issues like night blindness. So those are the clinical features of zinc deficiency. So again, if it's in early development, we can see issues with short stature. Later in life, if there's zinc deficiency, we can see issues with gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea and loss of appetite. There can also be issues with immune system functioning, so increased risk of infections. There can be reproductive issues with hypogonadism. Psychiatric issues can also occur, especially anxiety and depression. And in severe zinc deficiency, we can see integumentary issues like diffuse hair loss, skin lesions, and then also we can see night blindness as well. So how is zinc deficiency diagnosed and treated? So the diagnosis of zinc deficiency is through looking at plasma levels of zinc. So we actually see low zinc levels. The normal level of zinc is 70 to 250 micrograms per deciliter. And then we can see deficiency below this level. So mild deficiency would be 40 to 60 micrograms per deciliter. And once zinc deficiency has been diagnosed, how is it treated? So treatment of zinc deficiency oftentimes is by looking at the cause of zinc deficiency, but then also oral supplementation. So oral supplementation, quoted numbers are two to three milligrams per kilogram per day to replete stores. So if an individual is deficient in zinc, this dosing can be used temporarily to increase zinc levels. And then because we look at the cause of zinc deficiency, if there is increased utilization due to pregnancy or lactation, higher doses can be used at those times. So we talked about a recommended daily allowance of 8 to 11, but in those circumstances where there's increased utilization like lactation, it can be increased to 11 to 12 milligrams per day. So that is how zinc deficiency is diagnosed and treated. So if you want to learn more about other nutrient deficiencies, please check out my lessons on those topics. And if you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the notification bell to help support the channel and stay up to date on future lessons. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.